what is the history of selenium as a nutritional agent and why is it so important? Really, uh, uh, the history of selenium and coming as a nutritional agent really um, ties very closely to the history of our company and the work that we've been working on for the se last several years. Uh, prior to 1980, the only form of selenium supplementation that we had in the nutritional or dietary supplement industry was sodium selenite, the inorganic form of selenium. And in the late 1970s, the research community wanted to develop a way to um, replicate a food form of selenium or organically bound selenium that's found in foods. And there was a lot of work being done with hydroponics, growing plants in selenium-rich water, and growing plants in selenium-rich soil, and trying to process the plant to obtain this organically bound selenium. So in the early 1980s, a group of yeast researchers began developing the production protocol related to growing uh, yeast in selenium-rich environment. It was found that, that the baker's yeast would organically bind the selenium exactly and fully replicate the process that a plant goes through. And so the product was developed in 1980. And very fortunately, about the same time, the National Cancer Institute began a trial called the Nutritional Prevention of Cancer Trial. Uh, and it was looking at the effects of selenium supplementation on skin cancer, supplementing with 200 micrograms of selenium in the form of the high selenium yeast was going to be used to look at reducing the occurrence or preventing the occurrence of skin cancer through selenium supplementation. Now, what were, what were the results of that nutritional prevention of cancer trial? Were those results published? Yes, they were. Um, the trial began in 1983, shortly after the development of the high selenium yeast organically bound form. Uh, it was begun in 1983. Uh, it was a double-blinded, placebo-controlled, gold standard trial. So it began in 83, and it was un actually unblinded in 1994. It was unblinded a few years early, because although it showed zero effect on uh, prevention of skin cancer, the trial was unbl unblinded and published because it showed anywhere from a 50 to 63 percent reduction in colon, lung, and prostate cancer. It was unblinded in 94, went through peer review, and then was published in the Journal of American Medical Association, a very prestigious journal. Uh, the results that showed the reduction from 50 to 63 percent reduction in colon, lung, and prostate cancer. In the oncology community, it was considered to be a landmark trial. Uh, that's a term then in the oncology world that basically says this is a complete paradigm shift from what we believed before. It was really the first time that a nutritional agent and something as simple as a selenium supplement had been shown to prevent colon, lung, and prostate cancer to the degree of 50 to 63 percent. So it was a, it w it was a landmark trial and, and a complete shift in the thinking of the oncology world that a nutritional agent could prevent cancer. I would imagine a study like that made, made a lot of news, didn't it, uh, uh, back when those results were published? Yeah, I, I remember that well. It was uh, that publication in, in JAMA came out in Christmas Eve of 1996. Uh, I happened to be traveling with my family on Christmas, and what had been a, a relatively small business prior to that became, it went quadrupled in, in overnight. It, it became a, a, a big effort for us at that point because on every major news network, on CBS, ABC, NBC, CNN at that time, it was announced that night on Christmas Eve that uh, selenium had been shown to prevent cancer. And uh, it, it, was a, it was a tremendous boost in, in the recognition of selenium as a nutritional agent. And what levels for that, that was published in the Journal of American Medical Association right. in the JAMA, uh -huh. and what levels of selenium did they use in terms of where they found the most effective for in, some of the... For in the trial, the uh, they used both placebo and a 200 microgram level. Mm -hmm. 200 microgram per day. Yeah, level. 200 microgram per day. And, and the USRDA level, uh, if, if you know those, are, are focused primarily on a minimum level of 70 micrograms today up to an upper level of 400 micrograms a day. And the, the RDA is, is set at that level that if we go below 70 micrograms uh, in, in respect to selenium, that we have effects of deficiency. Uh, levels above that uh, are what we call supernutritional levels. So we only need 70 micrograms to keep 
um, our bodies in tune with not having the effects of deficiency. But at a 200 microgram, a super nutritional level, we start seeing some of these health benefits that were found in the trial. Mm -hmm. And I guess that would be why it's referred to as a nutraceutical instead of just a nutritional supplement because you get that added effect at higher levels? That is correct. That is correct. And, it, and it's really, um, uh, in most of the products you see on the marketplace today, it's either going to be as a standalone product, uh, as a 200 microgram standalone product, or it will be part of a men's health product or a women's health product. Uh, and oftentimes those are at 100 or 200 microgram levels.